All right, I just dug into my uh, electrical panel for my uh, good old well and my shop. So I uh, last weekend I put excuse me this enclosure on it, which fits a transfer switch, and this conduit right here goes to this transfer switch, which feeds my house. Oh, by the way, if your transfer switch is doing this, it means it's in a fault. All you do is push the test button. Boom, you're back in business. Anyway, so uh, back to the other panel. So my main idea is I'm gonna splice both switches in here. Um, this is not considered an electrical panel, it's actually considered a switch, so it's just an enclosure, so you can do whatever the hell you, or it's considered a raceway, so you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, especially has, especially because it has lots of room for activities. You'll see in the future, I promise. Um, here's the, the hots coming from my panel. They're just long enough where I could slam one of these bad boys on it. Uh, and then extend the wire. I'm gonna, I know I hate doing this, but I have to extend the neutral inside the um, the panel and bring it over here. So that's where I'm at now. Anyway, see you guys in about 20 minutes. There, my fabric gobble the panel. You got the one neutral splice, and it's a little on the full side. So. See you in a little bit. Gotta go take care of the wife. Woo Got this pig wired up. Got the emergency terminals open because I'm haven't figured what I'm doing it. Haven't figured out exactly how I'm gonna do it, but I want to put a pigtail off it so I can plug uh, this heap into it. Um, but right now it's hot, so uh, figure I could go into. Um, Show you how to program one of these Impact 1500 controllers right here after you install a new one. This includes if you're uh, replacing it. No special software needed. All right, well, <laughs> as you can tell, this is the older Impact 1500 controller. It doesn't have the USB port right here. These on boot up are faster than the new ones just because they have less crap to load but you know it's the same thing anyway first we're going to go into programming so we're going to password is all zeros set sources we don't need in phase monitoring normal source no phases, it's single. Set voltage to 40 because we're in the US. Ah! Scared the poop out of me. Didn't think I was going to transfer that quick. So, everything else should be the same. Oh, hold on a sec. Okay, that noise that startled me was the transfer switch transferring and my pump trying to kick on, but I had the valve close to my tank because I was burping the tank while I was, you know, had the water off. Anyway, so that's all done. Anyway, now we've already set the normal source. Now we're going to go to emergency source. Now our phases, single phase. Set voltage. It says 120, 240. So now the now the basic setup is is uh, done with it. So it's going to function just fine. So you go back in here. You can check out each line to line, phase to phase. Now we need to set the time. Because Ideally, what I'm really doing this for is uh, I want to see if we have any power glitches so this could log it. 
because this could log certain, you know, loss of phase, blah, blah, blah. So time and date, set time. It is currently 410 at my house. Actually, so it's, so it's going to be 16. at my house. And I set date. It's the 22nd. Um, I, the same time. I recommend setting this up, especially if you have an automatic exercise built into this, so that if for some apparent reason that uh, you're monitoring it so closely and like, you know, when daylight savings hits for, you know, us uh, weirdos, it um, doesn't set you back an hour or doesn't push you back an hour from what you normally used to exercising. So I just blow through that, push yes, save. You hit back. Now what we're gonna do, set up like we want to exerciser. So we're gonna go set exerciser, event one. We're gonna enable it. Unload it because we don't want it to transfer. Load it if we want it to transfer. Interval weekly. We could do monthly, day a month, or daily, or weekly. We want to do it weekly, ideally. Repeat rate one. If it was set to repeat rate two, it would do it every other week. Repeat rate three would do it every three weeks. Repeat rate one does it every week. Duration, this is hours, this is minutes. So normally I do it for 15. Start date. So the next day of week that you'd want to start, since today is Saturday, Sunday would be the 23rd. Nine. Sorry, we're in the U.S., so we we write our dates all funky. I can't remember why, but there's a re there's some oddball reason that we do it that way. Start time. Let's do it eight in the morning because we like to hate we hate on our neighbors. So it brings you back to the main screen. No load exerciser 923 next Sunday at 8 a.m. So kind of get it. It's it's not that hard. Um I did want to show you something inside the cabinet really quick though. So I have single phase power cone in my house, so I have only two phases, A and B. So one and two right there, A and B. And the third one, third pole of the switch I'm using for the neutral. Now, if you so happen to get a three pole switch, um, number one, make sure at least it has a 208 coil or a 240 volt coil, a 480 volt coil. Anything else won't work. Um, and a, another thing what you do is um, for the third leg for the C phase, what you actually have to do is move around the wiring because like here, like this says LC, load C. So that's that used to be on that lug back there. You can't see it. That used to be on that back lug back there, but I had to pull it off and I put L LN, which is actually zip tied up in the wiring harness, all nice and cute. It's pretty much on all the harnesses on polar, har polar generators. Um, and same thing down there. I'm probably going to zip tie that wire up later, but not right now. But uh, if you pick up a switch like this, make sure the coil says. Let me get that nice and deep light. See that coil says 208 volt? Yeah, you can use a 208 or a 240 volt coil for your single phase for your house. If it says 480, you basically have a manual transfer switch with that so you can see what the power is doing. So that's my switch. Um, pretty simple. I mean, 
especially for general tech. Oh, also one thing with the controls and this all this logic shit. You gotta remember almost all trans switches. If it's going to, let's say it's going to an emergency source, it has to have power from the emergency side to actually activate the coil to switch it over. If there's no emergency voltage available, it won't switch over. Just food for thought. And same thing with normal. If there's nothing available or doesn't accept that source, it's not going to switch to it. Anyways, you guys have a great day.